So here is our agenda for today, what we're gonna be discussing. Number one, five things Big Pharma may be telling you about nerve pain and uh, maybe some myths around that. We're gonna talk about a miracle <clears throat> mineral studies prove can naturally help. Number three, we're gonna talk about the top two forms of this mineral and all Americans and adults should be using. And then number four, we're gonna have a unique Ayurvedic herb that helps you relieve stress that we'll be talking about. And as mentioned, we'll do Q and A as we go along with myself and Rachel, and we'll create space at the very end. So let's get started with myths. And here's number one, myth number one, sciatica is a diagnosis. Who here has experienced sciatica? If you've experienced sciatica in your life, go ahead and type, type me in the chat. We'd love to know that. But sciatica is not a disease and it's not a diagnosis. It's actually a descriptor of symptoms rather than a diagnosis. And the origin of the problem can vary. Herniated disc and bone spurs are often to blame. Arthritis or spinal stenosis, which is a narrowing of the spinal canal, can also cause sciatica. <clears throat> and it can also come from problems of the sacroiliac joint, the SI joint, on the back of your hip. A piriformis muscle in your hip could also be pressing on your nerve, which can refer a pain. But there's one common underlying root cause that's involved in all these issues, and that is inflammation. And therefore, if you can find a way to better manage inflammation in your body, you can more easily manage nerve pain symptoms. And I'll cover more simple ways to do that later. And number two, myth number two, is that you should rest up if you have sciatic flare-ups. I would hear this all the time with my patients when I would treat people with back pain. It's like, well, I'm just resting. I'm just laying on my back and doing nothing and sitting there. So <clears throat> that's not what you want to do. If you're like most people, you may think that bed rest and taking it easy is the best when you're in pain. But contrary to popular belief, bed rest is not typically recommended for sciatica pain. In fact, too much bed rest can weaken muscles and cause other problems like constipation or blood clots. And believe me, I've seen it as a physical therapist. For over a decade, I've seen many patients with nerve pain stay sedentary, and it only leads to things getting worse. And not just in their physical state, but in their mental and emotional well being. It's not good. So you want to find ways to still move while keeping your irritation to a minimum and not aggravating it, not doing things that make it worse. So as a doctor of physical therapy, I've spent many years helping people get out of nerve pain. And one of the ways of which I did this was through therapeutic exercises. So what I want to show you are a few daily movements that you can, some of them you can do right now that can help with ease, ease your pain and even prevent pain in the future. So here's one we can all do together. <clears throat> First, we have posture corrections. So if you're if you're in a seated chair right now, what I want you to do is sit upright. Ideally, you're in a position where your hips are a little above your knees. That's gonna give you better uh, leverage for moving your back. And all you wanna do here is just go from a slight slouch position to a really over-exaggerated, over-corrected posture correction slouch, right? So imagine a string kind of pulling up your chest where your chest is like facing towards 45 degrees up, right? And then go back to a slight slouch and then again, over-correct the slouch. And this is one you want to do about 10 times and breathe with it. And what we're doing here is we're pumping fluid. We're getting movement in the lower part of the back. Oftentimes when we have referral pain going down the back, it's because there's some sort of pressure happening from like at the disc or some, some, some skin tissue around there that's pushing on that nerve and referring pain down your leg. And what this posture correction does, it kind of moves things around. And oftentimes it moves that disc back, back to its normal spot. Most people who experience sciatica will that they're having this pain after long periods of sitting when they're slouching too much, right? When the, when the spine is bent in that forward position. So what this posture correction does is it overcorrects it and gets you to extend the back and move it in the direction it needs to move to refer to decrease your pain. This is a great thing to do throughout the day, like every two hours. It's a great thing to do if you're working. You know, if you're sitting in front of a computer all day, it's also a great thing to do if you've been on a long car ride. Easy way to, to reduce back pain and get things back to normal. Now, let me show you another one here to, re to really get mobility in the lower part of the spine is a lumbar rotation. So on, a, on your bed, you can do this. You can do it on the floor. You can do it on a yoga mat, or you can do it like I'm showing you here on a massage table. All you're going to do is lay on your back, bend your, bring your feet towards your hips a little bit with your knees bent, and then rotate to one side and then rotate to the other side using your breath. Inhale as you go up, exhale as you go down. Inhale as you go up, exhale as you go down. And this is another one you wanna do around eh, 30 seconds, maybe one minute, but around 10 reps maybe, both sides. So those first two, 
exercises that I show you were really stretches for mobility, posture correction, and lumbar rotations. And then what we want to do is wake up some of those muscles around the core, the hips, the glutes, and the pelvis, right? So to do that, we highly recommend bridges. So a bridge, again, from that lumbar rotation position, just laying on your back, bending your knees, feet flat, you're going to lift your hips from the bed. And a good thing to do is kind of imagine a little bowl of soup under your belly button. What you're going to do is tilt that bowl of soup towards you. You're going to tilt your pelvis towards you and roll up your spine segment by segment to where you get all the way up and you want to feel your glutes contract at the top. That's the key. What we're trying to do here is activate your glutes. Many of us have really weak gluteal muscles because we're, we're sitting so much and that creates a lot of instability and a lot of jarring on our back when we're walking around. We wanna wake up those glutes, stabilize the pelvis, which stabilizes the back, which releases pressure on that nerve. And this is one, again, you can do about 10 times. And then- Chad, quick question on the first exercise you did where you, you corrected the, the posture when you came up. When do you breathe and how long is a question that we just got about holding each of those different stretches? Okay, good. So let me go back to that one. So look at it here, posture correct. That's a great question. So anytime with our breathing, we want to exhale on the contraction part of any movement, right? So on the slouch, we're relaxing. That's when we want to inhale. When we overcorrect, we're, we're contracting. That's when we want to exhale. Okay, it's so nice and easy, and you'll feel that rhythm with it. But really, it's the low back, right? So was there another part of that question, Rachel, or did we get all that? No, it was just more how long to hold each position for and when to breathe. Oh, a firm ending. And what you want to do is go as far in extension as you comfortably can. Okay. So you don't want to kind of just barely go there if you can go further, right? The key is what you want to do is explore end range. That's where the difference is going to be made. Good question. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. But then we have uh, a way to strengthen the core. So everybody, everybody knows the core is important, right? It's like a, it's like a core set. You know, many people wear those belts when they go lift heavy objects, you see workers that they wear those belts, right? but you have a natural core set inside of you. It is your core, but like your glutes, most people have a very weak core and sit-ups aren't typically the best thing to do to, to really increase the strength of the core. Ideally, especially with people in back pain, we wanna keep the spine in neutral and strengthen it. So you can see what we're doing here is a dead bug, right? I'm laying on my back again, arms up, knees up, and I'm taking my opposite leg and opposite arm back and then bringing them back slowly. Okay. And while I'm doing this, the only thing I'm focusing on is, is keeping my low back flat on the bed. I want to prevent it from hyperextending, right? Keep a neutral spine. So the, the feeling of what that feels like is like you're squeezing it. Like you have to go to the restroom. You're squeezing your pelvic floor. You're, you're taking a little inhale and just bracing your core a little bit. You're not necessarily sucking in in any way. You're just making strong core. Like if someone's going to punch in the stomach, just make a strong belly as you do opposite arm and opposite leg. Now, you can see I'm using arms and legs here. For some people, that might be too challenging. So for some people, you want to just use your legs, right? Just have your arms up. Don't move the arms and just go back and forth with the legs. And also some people, that might be hard. What they can do is just use the arms and keep the legs up. Whatever you do, you want to try as best you can to keep your low back, low back as flat as you can. And this one, I like to go back, take, take three seconds to go back, hold for a second or two and then come back to that neutral position. And this is one you can do five times on each side or 10 total alternating. So we have four exercises that we showed you there that are great no matter who you are at any age. You could be a professional Olympic athlete or you could be 80 years old and having trouble getting up from your chair. All of those are appropriate and good because it creates good structural health inside of your body. And I, I gave you four there, but if you want more, you can go to nativepath.com enter in back pain under, under the search menu, and you're going to find a whole series of videos where you can do walkthrough videos with me where I actually show you these things and we, we actually do them together where I, where I count for you and give you all the cues. So I want to refer everybody there for more movement. And uh, by the way, if you check out nativepath.com today, you'll notice it's a brand new, beautiful website. We've been really making things more beautiful around there. So after this presentation, please go to nativepath.com search in back pain. You could really put in anything that you have going on, shoulder, neck, but you're going to find a whole host of a big library of exercises. So hope you enjoyed that. And uh, we'll get to more questions later. So back to the myths, back to the myths. Here's myth number three, which is you must take pain medications to deal with sciatica. So here's the question for you. 
If your car's heat gauge showed that it was about to overheat, would you just cover it up with a piece of duct tape and keep mm -hmm. driving? This is exactly how really like pain pills work. Pain medication only covers up symptoms of back pain and sciatica, relieving you from the symptoms of your condition, but not offering any kind of long-term cure. And the pain can still shoot up as soon as the medication wears off. Case in point, pain medication will only help you relieve your pain when you're taking it regularly. And note that pain medication doesn't actually get rid of what's causing the pain. It just gives your body temporary relief. And if you ever run out of medication, forget to take it, or otherwise don't have access to your medication, your pain will come back with a vengeance. And this will make your body reliant on painkillers. We say this all the time in, in, in the clinics. And it's, let's not forget, like it's really important to note, pain medications, they have side effects. They are very irritating to your gut, right? You, you mess up your gut, you start messing up your health. It leads to a whole host of chronic issues. And I would see this all the time. Someone starts with back pain, they start taking medications, their gut health gets worse, and all of a sudden the whole system starts going haywire, right? We, we really need to come back and focus on the root of the problem. So even worse, since your pain medication doles your senses and relieves you of pain, you may not be able to tell if your sciatica or back pain is progressing or getting better, leaving you unaware to the extent of your condition. And this is a very, very dangerous place to be, but it gets even more dangerous. And here's the reality. This is, this is the truth of, of my experience in working in healthcare. Doctors are often sponsored by pharmaceutical companies to push their products, right? So sometimes their desire for a kickback may cause them to recommend a dangerous or expensive painkiller for your pain. And bottom line, while our current medical system is set up to incentivize getting you hooked on medications, it's not a long-term solution or a cure for sciatica, right? In fact, for big pharma, a patient cured is a customer lost, right? We got it. We got to think about that. That's just, this is the way the system goes. And that's why it's important to take matters in our own hands and find natural solutions. And that's why I'm happy that you're here with me today. Your attendance to this webinar tells me that you're on the path to heal, healing, which is why I'm so excited to share some of the natural modalities with you later in this presentation today. Okay. On to myth number four. Really quick, Chad, going back to that. Zanita brought up a great point. It's like putting a bandaid on. It's your body is sending you these pain points because it's having issues. And like you said, if we disregard it and we keep ignoring it, it's just going to get worse. The point where it's going to get far beyond what we can do. So when your body's telling you there's an issue, it's, it's best to get to the root of it. And I love that you gave these exercises that we can do. So not only the people that are in pain, but it can be a nice preventative to make sure we stay strong, to make sure we do preventive work so we don't have more sciatica pain or it's worse. So I love that I had to bring that up because I did like that she said it was a Band-Aid. So I wanted to bring that up because that yes. was perfect. Yeah, thank you, Rachel. And thank you, Anita, for that. And it's a really good observation. And and what, we're, what we've been doing, right, is, is with pain, we numb it, we yeah. suppress it, we put it away, and like some, something underneath is getting worse. And it's, it's ready. It's, it's going to pop sooner or later. Right. And then that's what that's what often leads to myth number four. Right. <laughs> Which is that surgery is necessary. Right. So we would see this all the time. Right. Patients with moderate sciatica pain, if they go see a surgical specialist, you know, it's, it's usually unnecessary. The thing is, if you go to a surgeon, you might get a steroid injection and eventually get told that that you need surgery right away. And again, reality, the, the surgeon is not really understanding therapeutic exercises that can help. The surgeon's not really thinking about inflammation that can cool off this issue. They're, they're just doing what they're, what they're trained to do, right? So this is an unfortunate reality of how our medical system works. And in many cases, the condition can and will improve without those measures, right? Some, sometimes pain is just normal. We just have to keep moving and not stay sitting still. In fact, practicing those stretches I showed you will help you align your body and strengthen the weaker trouble areas. And those movements alone will, like, will make you less vulnerable to, to pain flare-ups and sciatica and possibly not even need surgery in those cases, right? So let's move on to myth number five, which is sciatica pain is an unavoidable issue or part of getting older. And it is true that your risk of sciatica pain goes up as you age and other risk factors include obesity and jobs where you're lifting heavy things or driving or sitting for long periods of time. That's a real big thing that I would see in the clinic. I would ask people about their sciatica pain. What, what do you do every day? I'm like, well, I just, I just sit at a desk, right? <laughs> and that's not what our native ancestors were doing, right? And diabetes also increases the risk of nerve damage, right? But sciatica alone, is not inevitable. And there are measures you can take to help ward off 
um, the pain that you might be experiencing. And the biggest thing that you can do is to take measures to reduce inflammation in your body. When I showed you those exercises, we were addressing the mechanical aspects of sciatica, right? That's the, the muscles, the tendons, the ligaments, all the things working together. Those are mechanical things, but there's always a chemical side of things when it comes to pain. And, and again, this is inflammation. This is perhaps the most important aspect of keeping your nerves healthy as you age. And it's exactly where the miracle mineral can help. So what is this miracle mineral, right? So this miracle mineral has been shown to possess powerful inflammation relieving results in, adult, in folks with nerve pain. And it's already inside of you. In fact, every cell in your body contains this mineral and needs it to function. About 60% of the miracle mineral content in your body occurs in bone, while the rest is in muscles, soft tissues, and fluids, including your blood. And one of its main roles is to act as a cofactor, a helper molecule, so to speak, in the biochemical reactions continuously performed by enzymes. And it's involved in more than 600 reactions in your body, including energy creation, where it converts food and energy, protein formulation, creating new proteins from amino acids, blood pressure, helping the heart and blood vessels pump blood and oxygen, gene maintenance, helping create and repair DNA and RNA, muscle movements, aiding in muscle contraction and relaxation, nervous system regulation, regulating neurotransmitters, which sends messages throughout your brain and nervous system, right? So what is this miracle mineral? Well, the conventional name for the miracle mineral is magnesium and breakthrough research shows just how beneficial it can be for fighting inflammation. In one review of 11 studies concluded that magnesium supplements decrease levels of inflammatory markers in people with chronic inflammation. And that's not all. Research also proves how this mineral can directly decrease nerve pain in the body. And since magnesium regulates processes involved in the inflammatory process, it's also been shown to be helpful in reducing nerve pain. And when cellular magnesium increases, inflammatory processes such as the release of pro-inflammatory proteins decrease. Magnesium may also prevent the activation of receptors found in nerve cells that regulate pain. And these findings suggest magnesium plays a role in regulating nerve pain, according to a study published in the February 2007 issue of Journal Archives of Biochemistry and Biophysics. <clears throat> Another study proved this mineral is effective in not only decreasing sciatic nerve pain, but also it helped regenerate the sciatic nerve itself. So researchers gave magnesium supplements to subjects with sciatic nerve injury and found that it improved their sciatica. Magnesium suppressed inflammatory proteins involved in pain signals, and at the same time, enhanced regeneration of the sciatic nerve. And the study was published in June 2001 issue of the Journal of Magnesium Research. Even more shocking, this mineral is showing promise for folks with fibromyalgia. I asked about fibromyalgia in the poll. Fibromyalgia is characterized by an overactive nerves that send signals to the brain, and these signals cause widespread tenderness and pain. According to a study published in May of 2022, taking magnesium may be beneficial for those with fibromyalgia. And researchers found that participants supplementing with magnesium reported significantly lower levels of stress and pain after just one month. And these findings show for the first time that magnesium relieves stress and reduces pain experienced in fibromyalgia patients. And I we would see fibromyalgia all the time in the clinic. It's kind of one of those things where the medical industry is like, I don't know, it hurts. I don't know. You got fibromyalgia. I just kind of throw it up there. But magnesium, right, is, is related to the nerves. Related to the nerves and inflammation, magnesium can be very beneficial for that. And here's even more research showing that magnesium is so important for managing inflammation and nerve pain. In fact, not having enough of it can actually increase levels of inflammation in the body. So yes, that's right. Too little magnesium will equal more inflammation. Just put that, put that in your head right there. It's really important to know that. And as you already know, chronic inflammation plays a key role in accelerating aging, chronic disease, and worsening nerve pain. But beyond reducing inflammation and physical pain, magnesium can also help reduce anxiety, panic attacks, and heart palpitations. And as you learn, magnesium helps to regulate nerve signals, muscle contractions, and heart rhythms. But it's also thought to affect levels of neurotransmitters, such as serotonin, which can help reduce anxiety and panic symptoms. And magnesium is known to help reduce heart palpitations by relaxing the smooth muscle in the walls of blood vessels, allowing blood to flow more freely and reducing the intensity of the palpitations. 
So let's do a quick rundown of some of the other top benefits of magnesium. And it's involved in over 300 bodily functions and will help us with the following things. Energy production, muscle contraction, keeps the heartbeat steady. It makes DNA, helps with nerve signaling, blood pressure regulation, keeps bones and teeth strong. This is a big part of the bone healthy equation that we always talk about with collagen and vitamin D and blood sugar regulation. And it also makes protein, all the building blocks of your body. So at this point, it's easy to see just how important maintaining a healthy magnesium level is in order to avoid inflammation, muscle, and nerve pain, and not to mention reduce anxiety and support deep muscle relaxation. Nonetheless, studies suggest over 50% of Americans are deficient in this mineral, and even worse, up to 70% of adults are deficient in magnesium. With over half the country deficient in magnesium, it's no surprise why so many suffer with chronic inflammation and nerve pain symptoms. And older adults have an increased risk for magnesium deficiency because they tend to consume fewer magnesium rich foods than younger people. In addition, older adults' bodies may absorb less of this mineral in what they eat and their kidneys may excrete more of it through their urine. So most of you know, most everybody knows I'm, I'm a food first guy, whole food first guy. Like if anybody's asking me what's going on, I'm always asking, what foods are you eating? Let's start there, right? So for magnesium, here's a list of foods rich in magnesium. And this, if you want to write this down, these include pumpkin seeds, chia seeds, almonds, spinach, cashews, peanuts, avocados, and milk, right? So those are, those are foods that do contain magnesium. But sadly, even if you think you're eating a magnesium-rich diet, even, even if you're eating all these foods, the gradual depletion of nutrients from our soils has left many vegetables with lower levels of magnesium. And this is largely due to modern conventional farming practices, which aren't always sustainable and in harmony with nature. So there, for instance, there's much less magnesium in pumpkin seeds and chia seeds and spinach today than there was 50 years ago and far less magnesium in those foods than there were a hundred years ago, right? So a lot has changed. And this is a big reason why we're you know, if you look at all the stats, we're getting more and more unhealthy as a species. Magnesium deficiency is one of the big drivers, right? And as I, saw, <clears throat> as I saw this to be true in most of my older patients, nearly all of my patients were deficient in magnesium. And for those listening, just FYI, a normal range is 1.3 to 2.1, right? That's, that's milli equivalents per liter. And you can find this out from urine or blood tests, but I just wanted to share that. You can always get your magnesium levels tested. But to overcome this deficiency, your body requires much higher levels of magnesium than diet alone can provide. Again, the topsoil, the foods we're eating are just way more deficient, not as nutritious as they used to be. So for this reason, it's important to add magnesium supplements into your routine. I'm a firm believer of it. And the safe and recommended dosage that we feel confident in is what you see here. So for women, around 300 to 320 milligrams per day. Oops, sorry about that. Ooh, that's my, yeah, so three, 310 to 320 milligrams per day. And for men, men need to process more. So around 400 to 420 milli, milligrams per day. Things to keep in mind there. But it's also important to know that not all magnesium supplements are created equally. And many types of magnesium supplements are available on the market. And out of all of these, there are two unique types that are most helpful for magnesium deficient adults struggling with nerve pain. So that said, if you're over the age of 50 and your main health priorities include supporting a healthy inflammatory response, managing nerve health and decreasing nerve pain, reducing leg and muscle cramps, reducing uh, muscle tension or relieving anxiety, then you'll wanna make sure you're using a combination of two unique forms of magnesium. This is mag magnesium oxide and magnesium glycinate, right? It's mission critical that older adults use both forms of these. And the reason is <clears throat> magnesium oxide helps reverse and prevent magnesium deficiency. It's the most effective one for that. And there are numerous clinical benefits to magnesium oxide. It's widely considered the most important form of magnesium for adults over 50. Magnesium oxide is different from other forms of magnesium and that it's more highly concentrated, which means it contains more magnesium per dose than any other form. Because you get more magnesium per dose, this form is recommended to adults over 50 to help reverse and prevent magnesium deficiency. And as you already learned, magnesium deficiency can lead to major health issues, 
including chronic inflammation, muscle pain, leg cramps, high blood pressure, migraines, insomnia, and even depression and anxiety. Magnesium oxide also provides a host of other health benefits unique to its form, such as relieving muscle cramps, which Rachel, as you mentioned, a lot of people are dealing with that. One of the first questions we ask them is magnesium, right? Also helps with decreasing blood pressure, promoting sleep, uh, reducing bloating and indigestion, and relieving constipation. Magnesium glyc <clears throat> glycinate, the other unique mo molecule and ideal form of magnesium is the most absorbable form of magnesium, which means you'll get greater inflammation fighting results without wasting time or money. And there are also numerous clinical benefits to magnesium glycinate. It's the most common type of magnesium supplement recommended by doctors due to its high absorption rate. And not only is it the most absorbable form, but it also has many added benefits due to containing the amino acid glycine, which is known for having calming and pain relieving qualities. Magnesium glycinate is the form most studied for its ability in helping to reduce nerve and muscle pain, enhance regeneration of the sciatic nerve, relieving anxiety and depression, promoting bone health, managing blood sugar, maintaining normal heart rhythms, reducing symptoms of uh, premenstrual uh, syndrome, amplifying exercise performance, and certain conditions or risk can improve with magne magnesium glycinate supplementation. And these include fibromyalgia, chronic fatigue syndrome, risk of stroke, heart failure, and all core cause mortality. So it's the number one best absorbing form of magnesium available. And here's why. You see, the absorption rate and bioavailability of magnesium supplements differ depending on their molecular form, and forms that are chelated are better absorbed in the gut than less soluble forms. Magnesium glycinate is a chelated form. This means it tends to be better utilized by the body than other forms that are excreted more easily. In other words, if your magnesium supplement doesn't contain magnesium glycinate, you are wasting your hard-earned money. So as I mentioned earlier, I'm Dr. Chad Walden, co-founder of Native Path, senior nutrition expert and doctor of physical therapy for over a decade. And for years, I've been giving my followers natural alternatives to the mainstream medical advice that's too one size fits all. Using a nutrition first approach to health, I show folks the science behind how powerful adding certain minerals like magnesium into your diet can be. It's in fact, it's a must have for someone as health conscious as yourself. Because believe it or not, you deserve to live pain-free and worry-free. And now I've developed this product finally for you. So introducing Native Balance. In order for your body to actually experience the benefits of magnesium supplementation, two things need to happen. Number one, you need to reverse or refill your magnesium deficit. And number two, you need to make sure your, your body can actually absorb that magnesium. It's not how much you take, it's how well you absorb it. So fortunately, because magnesium oxide contains more magnesium per dose than any other form, it's revered as the best form for reversing this deficiency. And using this form will bring your magnesium levels back to an optimal concentration. And then magnesium glycinate steps in. Magnesium glycinate is the chelated form, which makes it highly absorbable. And this means it's better utilized by the body than any other forms that are excreted more easily. In other words, magnesium glycinate helps you experience more of the inflammation soothing benefits you're looking for with zero side effects. So in this way, Native Balance uses this dual action technology to create a double layer of magnesium coverage, helping you to bring inflammation levels back down so that you can live in your golden years pain-free. But that just wasn't good enough. So you deserve something more and something even more incredible, which is why you'll be thrilled to know that we supercharged our dual action magnesium formula with yet another marvelous ingredient. That is ashwagandha. So ashwagandha is an adaptogenic herb that's popular in the Ayurvedic and traditional medicine. And it's, it's good for a few reasons. So one, it's mother nature's most powerful stress and inflammation reliever. It's been used for more than 2,500 years and has been used extensively in research, used in over 200 studies for its anti-anxiety, anti-inflammatory, and neuroprotective properties. In fact, ashwagandha benefits are so potent that it's often referred to as the youth-giving herb. And like all adaptogenic herbs, it helps the body maintain homeostasis, namely by lowering stress in the body. But here are three of the most remarkable clinically proven benefits associated with ashwagandha. The benefit number one, ashwagandha is perhaps best known for its ability to reduce stress. It's classified as an adaptogen, a substance that helps the body cope with stress. Stress can be emotional, 
It can be psychological or physical, and regardless of the form, it usually involves cortisol. Among other functions, cortisol is also known as the stress hormone because your adrenal glands release it in response to stress. One study found that a high dose of ashwagandha root extract significantly reduced serum cortisol levels. The study participants also reported that their perceived stress levels diminished, giving them a better quality of life. Even without measuring cortisol levels, other studies suggest that ashwagandha may improve stress and anxiety. In one trial, researchers gave ashwagandha to people with anxiety. Along with other interventions, ashwagandha significantly improved mental health, concentration, energy levels, social functioning, vitality, and overall quality of life. And benefit number two of ashwagandha, Clinical trials suggest that ashwagandha may help fight inflammation, making it a potent treatment for rheumatoid arthritis. And the plant's use as an anti-inflammatory goes back a long time. Ayurvedic medicine practitioners would mash the root into a paste and apply it to ulcers as a pain reliever to joints and to ease inflammation. And modern research shows that ashwagandha contains compounds that help reduce inflammation in the body. And by reducing inflammation, it's possible to do to really better manage pain responses in the body. Researchers have also found that these compounds target inflammatory pathways in the body and help reduce levels of inflammatory markers such as interleukin-10. In one study from 2008, adults experiencing stress took ashwagandha extract for 60 days. And as a result, they had significant reductions in C-reactive protein, that's an inflammatory marker, compared with those who consumed a placebo. In another study, researchers gave people 0.5 grams of ashwagandha twice per day for seven days, and this reduced patients' levels of inflammatory markers compared to placebo. And a small study suggested that ashwagandha powder eased swollen and painful joints in people with rheumatoid arthritis. So this youth-giving properties of ashwagandha, it doesn't just apply to your body. Pre preliminary studies suggest it may also boost your mental abilities and brain function. Though using ashwagandha for brain health is a long Ayurvedic practice, research in humans is just now starting to prove its shocking benefits. And one study showed that reaction time and cognitive function improves significantly in people taking ashwagandha versus the placebo. And memory information processing was also increased in participants of another study that looked specifically at the effects of ashwagandha in people with mild cognitive impairment. Other research suggests that chemicals from this herb can potentially help brain cell regeneration, and it may also protect the brain against beta amyloid. That's a plaque that causes cell damage and death. So here's the exciting part. As an exclusive launch special, we've set aside a very limited supply of native balanced magnesium complex with ashwagandha just for you. And you now have the opportunity to stock up and save or just try it out with a very special discount. All you need to do is click the link Coach Rachel and Krista have entered into the chat and here's what's also great. At Native Path, we believe in the quality of our products, which is why we now offer a 365-day feel-good guarantee every time you purchase. So what that means is you have an entire year to experience the, the benefits of Native Balance Magnesium Complex and, and really see all the benefits it can have to your nerves, your muscles, and your overall well-being. And if for any reason you're not 100% satisfied, you may return unopened products from your most recent order to us within 365 days that is delivered to your door. All you have to do is simply call our customer care center for assistance and you can feel rest assured that you can order with confidence in knowing that your purchase is backed by our 365 day feel good money back guarantee. That's a new thing we're doing here a whole year. So let's review again, the five big benefits of Native Balance, right? We don't wanna miss these. Number one, reduces, relieves anxiety and depression, alleviates stress, soothes muscles, improves insomnia, and is a natural mood booster. We're super excited about, about this product. We've been, we've been wanting to have a magnesium product for a long time. We're just have to do some research and find out the right way to do it. And we love how we combined it with ashwagandha. So you might have some questions such as how much native balance do I need to take every day? Well, based on research, using anywhere between 300 milligrams to 400 milligrams of magnesium can provide the inflammation soothing support many individuals seek. And some, some studies show that benefits such as improvements in inflammation, muscle spasms, nerve pain, stress, anxiety, and sleep may be experienced within the first few days. But for older individuals, the effects of years and years of magnesium deficiency 
may put them at a critical disadvantage. We have to remember like the food we've been eating, not enough, right? We're, most all of us are, are, are at a disadvantage here. Thus, it's recommended for adults to supplement with magnesium for at least 60 days or more in order to achieve maximum benefits. Many of my patients find the most success with long-term daily use of magnesium to help ensure that one's most important inflammation markers are maintained for good. So it really makes sense for native balance users to order large quantities at a time. And the benefits of magnesium are only truly realized when it's taken day after day, month after month. Simply put, magnesium is no miracle supplement. Magnesium supplements only work if you take it on a consistent daily basis. Simply take one serving up to two times every day, but one serving is generally enough and take the right amount for the results you want. By taking at least one serving every day, you're giving your body the most bioavailable and potent form of magnesium you need to maximize your results and take it for the proper amount of time. Clinical studies show that the longer you use magnesium, the greater and longer lasting the inflammation soothing benefits will be. In other words, taking a few capsules here and there isn't gonna cut it, all right? Consistency, 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 that's the key which is why I recommend my clients start with at least three bottles of Native Balance. And at the time, or you could also do six bottles if you wanna be completely safe, right? but, but at least three, that way you, you sure up those 90 days and take it for those 90 days to really see the results. So what's different about Native Balance, our magnesium supplement? Well, using a unique magnesium layering technology, Native Balance is specifically designed to reverse magnesium deficiency while providing the most bioavailable form of magnesium on earth. And this dual action breakthrough provides a double layer of support with potent doses of magnesium oxide and magnesium glycinate to balance inflammation, relieve pain, stress, and so much more. It contains the powerful adaptogenic herb ashwagandha to further decrease stress and inflammation within the body. And why choose Native Path Magnesium over other brands? Unfortunately, other supplements cut corners with cheaper, less effective forms of magnesium to increase their profit margins at your expense. Native Balance, on the other hand, follows a strict set of guidelines to ensure you're getting the best product possible. <clears throat> Every ingredient is required to have numerous clinical studies showing its ability to improve the body's inflammatory response, support nerve health, relieve muscle cramps, and so much more. It had to contain the right form and an effective dose of both key forms of magnesium to make sure that you're getting the health benefits you're looking for without burning a hole in your wallet. And it had to contain the correct scientific form of each ingredient to ensure the absolute best absorbability and not cause any unwanted effects. And it had to meet strict manufacturing guidelines, including good manufacturing, manufacturing practice testing, screening for contaminants, and dissolution and disintegration testing to ensure it will be easily absorbed. All Native Path products are tested by a third party that's not involved with us. So that is our presentation presentation for today. We hope you enjoyed it. And again, thank you. And don't miss out. Don't miss out. So again, here we go. You can enter, click the link, just look in the chat. Krista and, and, and Rachel have put in the chat a little link where you can learn more about Native Balance. We're also going to be emailing you this, this information. You're going to have a recording of the webinar and also a link where you can purchase Native Balance. But for now, uh, I think now is a good time to move on to some questions. So hopefully we have some questions lined up. Chad, before we, before we dive into questions, I'm super excited because the problem I see all the time in the group is so many of our members are having issues with a lot of leg cramps and a lot of pain throughout the night. So to be able to have this product that we, you know, created is gonna help them with those cramps and also gonna be able to help them with their sleep is so important. So I'm so excited. I've already seen so many people say in the chat that they've ordered it. I'm, I'm so excited to see all the different benefits and relief that our amazing customers are gonna have from being able to supplement with a product that's so beneficial to their health. Yeah, it's a foundational thing. Like there's, there's a few supplements where I feel like because of the farming practices, because of these modern nutrient deficiencies, um, there's certain things that almost everybody should take. Magnesium being one of them, vitamin D, collagen, like these are things that no matter who you are, uh, it's, it's really hard to, to get the right amount without supplementing. And I'm, again, I'm glad you mentioned the cramps because as we saw in the poll, it's one of the main issues that most people have. And magnesium is the simplest, most readily available solution. The cramps are generally a sign that your magnesium deficiency is kind of catching up to you. So that, this is the recommendation of what we, we have here is magnesium and water, putting a little pinch of salt in your water, that typically does the tricks. So let's see our questions here and what we have. 
Anonymous says, my son had issues with his glutes and are 100% disengaged. He had no arches and against, and against my opinion, he used to run track and video flat shoes. He had issues, any suggestions? So uh, what, what, I'm assuming your son's a little older. Yeah, any, any activities that increase the glutes, the bridges that I showed you will be great. Um, learning how to properly swing a kettlebell, um, deadlifting would be very good seeing a coach, but there's many activities where you can do to engage the, engage the glutes, but start with the bridge. That's the easiest thing to do because you can't run from it. You have to engage the, the glutes in order to lift up the hips. Um, Catherine says, my question is about taking collagen supplements. What do I do wrong? I've been drink I've been drinking it for 12 months. My nails still break and losing my hair. So Catherine, if that's the issue, what I would, what I would ask is how much you're taking. And typically when, uh, when people aren't getting results, what they, need, what they need to do is just up their dose from one dose, one scoop to two scoops, or maybe even take three to four scoops for a period of maybe six to eight weeks. And that generally will fix the issue. And Catherine also asked, what can an individual take if he or she can't eat meat or fish? Um, well, protein is going to be very important. So if you can eat chicken, that would be, I don't know if you're referring to that as, as meat, but uh, eggs would be good. And if you can't do that, uh, plant-based proteins like beans, uh, would be beneficial. Uh, what am I forgetting here? Nuts would be help, helpful, um, but really getting in as much plant-based protein as you can because protein is is so important, really important. Uh, Regina says, how much magnesium should you take per day to help with inflammation? So Regina, as we mentioned here for women, right around that 300 to 400 uh, milligrams per day is going to be good. If, if someone's really deficient, if they've been tested, and like I mentioned, they're like well below that 1.3 range, maybe taking two uh, servings a day, that would be four capsules of the native balance would be ideal. But generally taking one serving is, is really all you need. Uh, Tony said, what type of doctor do I look for? I cannot drive longer than an hour. I had a problem I was not aware of since I had a majority of my life, which ended up to produce SIBO. I, I would sit at the toilet for way too long, take too many times a day. I just finished getting rid of that problem eight months ago and find pain directly behind my knees is the first thing that hurts while driving. And then it would go to my butt and feet if I roll. So what this sounds like, Tony, is you have uh, some referral pain from your back. That's what it sounds like to me, um, sp specifically because it's getting worse with sitting for longer periods of time. So what I would do, Tony, first thing you might want to try is just those back exercises. Uh, and some of the uh, magnesium would help reduce inflammation. But those back exercises that I recommended will be very helpful. Again, you can go to nativepath.com, enter in back pain. You'll see a whole series of videos that can be helpful. Outside of that, I would go to your doctor to, and ask them to get a referral to go see a good physical therapist. That would be helpful for you. But it does sound like you're getting some referral pain and uh, from your back. Rita says, I've taken magnesium for many years and I still have severe muscle, muscle pain and cramps. I don't understand. I've never found anything to help. So Rita, this is where one of the issues you may want to look at is what type of magnesium you're taking. You know, does it have man magnesium oxide and does it have magnesium glycinate? Those would be important things to look at. Those are really the forms that we feel are best for helping these specific issues around pain and cramps. Um, the other thing I would look at is your water intake and you know, make sure you're getting enough electrolytes. Um, magnesium, potassium, salt, all those things are going to be very helpful for you. Ruth says, how much turmeric can you safely take? I start my day with warm water, warm lemon water. Do I need to worry about my teeth? Will magnesium help? I generally don't worry about uh, the, like the teeth enamels being damaged by, by lemon water. When it comes to turmeric, just I recommend the normal uh, daily amount uh, that we have recommended on our label. Uh, just a normal serving. You don't need to over de overdo on turmeric in any way. <clears throat> and Jane says, what's the best thing to do for arthritis down the whole spine? Um, I was supposed to start lumbar epidurals, a set of three and one each month of steroid injections between lumbar four and five. I have not started them, but I don't think steroid shots are going to help me long-term, maybe lumbar block. So yeah, Jane, with arthritis, arthritis, anytime you see itis, right? Itis, that means inflammation. So arthritis means inflammation of the joint. So first and foremost, you want to make sure you're cooling off inflammation. And like we talked about today, magnesium can be very beneficial for that, specifically the magnesium oxide and glycinate that's in native balance. So along with other things that can help you with reducing inflammation, you want to really minimize the sugar, 
I would cut out all processed refined foods, cut out uh, inflammatory toxic fats like vegetable oil, canola oil, really just use good, clean, healthy fats like uh, coconut oil, butter, olive oil, things like that. And then get your body moving, you know, use really use those exercises that we talked about today and get it moving because um, the, what the injections, you're, you're right. It's, it's not going to help you long-term. We have to reduce, we have to get your back moving. We have to, Julia says, isn't it necessary to have, have it in combo with cal, uh, calcium, magnesium, and zinc for it to absorb? No, it's typically not necessary. This, the most absorbable forms that we're talking about here are the oxide and glycinate and supplementing with calcium in general is not something that we, we recommend. Um, calcium supplementation, a lot of people think they need to do that for strong bones, but we're, we're a country that has supplemented with more calcium and has the highest rates of osteoporosis. So that is typically not recommended. This form alone will, will help with absorption. So how many supplements should I take if I wanna be pain-free, have good eyesight, et cetera? Uh, if you want to be pain free, I mean, this all depends on who you are and, and where you're coming from, right, Catherine? Um, in this case, what we're recommending for supplements to take for pain is just just two capsules of the magnesium that, of the native balance that we're talking about today. Um, but generally, that, that that's really an individual question, and, and more information is really needed to answer that. Rita says, "I've tried so many things, and nothing has ever worked for me. I don't understand why." Um, well, so. That's tough to say too, Rita. I'm sorry you're having frustrations. I mean, yeah. So mainly, I would I would step back and if nothing else, I would look at the main, the most important things like what you're eating, how you're sleeping, how you're moving, right? And and sometimes less can be more. And when it comes to all these different crazy supplements, remember the most important ones are the foundational ones like vitamin D, magnesium, collagen, drinking lots of water, sleeping well. That's what's going to do it. Joy says my husband was diagnosed with. Polymalasia rheumatica two years ago. It's inflammation of the large muscles. He's down to two milligrams of prednisone daily, keeps disease manageable. Do you think your magnesium product would help him? Yes, yes, for sure. Any, anytime we're dealing with something like rheumatoid issues, anytime, that's inflammation, right? So the magnesium will de definitely affect that. Um, that will help with that. But all, along with that, really the lifestyle factors and the nutritional factors that are going to decrease magnesium, getting good movement in, that's all going to help. My husband has a feeding tube. Do you know if your capsules can be opened and dissolved into water to be put into a feeding tube? You should have no problem with that. That shouldn't be a problem at all, but it's always best in, the, in this case to work with your nurse and your doctor um, who, can, who can be more clear with that. Um, does this product interfere with other meds? No, magnesium is generally very safe, uh, but if there's any questions, please go to your doctor and who's really familiar with your lab work and your blood work and is aware of all the other medications you're taking, but generally magnesium is very safe. It's something that's already inside of you. What about pinched nerves in my hip from Jerry? Uh, so Jerry, same thing, that there's always gonna be an issue there that relates to inflammation. So magnesium is gonna be helpful with that. And hip mobility is probably gonna be very helpful for you too, Jerry. So um, some of the, the exercises I showed today are gonna have good movement for your hip. But for you, I would also go to nativepath.com and look for, uh, go to the search menu and look in hip pain. And you're going to see a series of videos where I walk you through different exercises you can do with your hip. And that should hurt you. That should help you. So Joyce said, should we take it in the morning or at night? I'm a bigger fan of taking it in the evening um, because it has that glycine and it can be helpful for sleep. Um, so magnesium is great to just really calm your body, relieve stress. That's very good to wind down about 90 minutes to two hours before bed is a good time to take that. A good question, Joyce. <laughs> Bill said I had a laxative problems with magnesium. So that could be a case, Bill, of you taking maybe too much or the wrong type. So sometimes uh, different forms of magnesium can really cause issues. But one thing uh, magnesium will help with is constipation. So sometimes the laxative problems that people are experiencing. It's just moving things along that have been stagnant for very long. And typically those wear off uh, once, once things have been moving pretty, for pretty good for a while. So Regina says, one of my vitamins had magnesium hydroxide. Would that be the same as magnesium, magnesium oxide? No, those are, those are a little bit different. Um, yeah, so magnesium oxide is what we're doing to reverse and prevent magnesium deficiency. I don't believe magnesium hydroxide is gonna be quite as effective. 
Anonymous said, I heard it's important to take D3 to get proper absorption of magnesium. Not necessarily the case. I mean, D3, also D3 will be better absorbed with K2. But going back to my original point, I, I pretty much feel everybody should take both D3 and magnesium together, but I don't feel that the magnesium, the D3 is going to help absorption of the magnesium. It actually may work the other way around where magnesium helps the absorption of the D3. Magnesium in and of itself, you can think of it like a primer on a wall. Like before you paint the wall, you put a primer on to lay the foundation and it'll help absorb other layers of paint going on. And that's kind of the issue with magnesium, but they do go well together. Uh, Sylvia said, once I get the supplement, should I stop using my magnesium gel? I don't know what your magnesium gel is, uh, but you probably would not need to take the gel on top of that. So this is a good absorbable form that should give you the results you want. Uh, and generally I, I wouldn't take, put too many, too many cooks in the kitchen. So Jane says, so my magnesium citrate isn't good then? I would say, you know, it's not necessarily, not that it's not good. It's just not as absorbable and it's not going to help uh, improve the deficiencies as well as these two forms of magnesium that we've, we've listed for you here. Anonymous says, I have very little cartilage in my joints. I take two to three scoops of collagen and the recommended dose of turmeric and krill oil. Those do make me feel better, but I still have lots of shoulder, neck, and back pain uh, that wakes me at night. What is your suggestion? So for this, if you're, if you're getting good results, that means you're probably helping with the inflammation, but you probably need movement in a specific location, right? So anonymous for you, what, again, what I would suggest is you, you do some therapeutic exercises, you go to nativepath.com, you enter in all of those shoulder pain, neck pain, back pain, and you start doing some of the exercises that I'll walk you through. And on top of that, and again, this is, I recommend this for everybody. Look at your positions throughout the day. You know, are you, are you sitting most of the time on the couch? You know, an easy thing that can help with posture and blood flow and, and just muscle strength is getting up and walking down the street every 45 minutes to two hours, making sure that nutrition is in order, you know, whole real foods, eliminating the sugar, eating good fats. Those are all going to help. Joyce says, I have osteopenia and osteoporosis. I'm taking native path collagen, 10 milligrams, bone health, seven and a half, collagen care plus D3, krill oil, and turmeric. Bone density numbers have improved since taking your products. Thank you. I plan to take your magnesium too. Will you ever offer bone health saving offer as you do on collagen peptides? Probably, probably, yeah, Joyce, we, we, bone health is coming back. Uh, we love bone health collagen. So yeah, we'll, we're going to be having some specials on that for sure. I hope, but don't quote me on that. That's all up to the team. <laughs> Marilyn says, my doctor said magnesium can interfere with thyroid medicine, um, should not take at the same time. So Marilyn, in this case, if your doctor said something like that, your doctor is, is the one who's aware of your lab work and your, your history. Um, generally, magnesium is not a problem with the thyroid, but I would, I would go back to your doctor and make sure everything is approved by them. And that's really for everybody. If you have some, some questions, you're not quite sure, always talk to your doctor first to make sure it's okay. So Rita says, I'm a diabetic and I've also had a heart attack and have a heart, I have had five stents. I use Swerve and monk fruit as sweeteners and fat-free foods because my heart doctor said my cholesterol must be at 70. I try so hard to do what will help me and the muscle pain makes life so hard my third jar, jar of collagen and have started taking uh, Steve Harvey's Elevate. I'm really trying to find help. Uh, Sarita, I'm, I'm so sorry you're, you're hurting and just going through everything. I, I can see how frustrating that would be. Um, you know, so for your doctor looking out with your cholesterol, you know, one thing, Rita, I would, I would do is come back to just the, just the simple basics, right? Make sure that you're, you're drinking enough water, and with the, the diabetes, that can be a thing that's driving a lot of other things, right? So the diabetes that we want to look at, the issue there is often a lot of processed and refined foods that are very high in carbohydrates, very high in sugar. I would look at what you're drinking. If it's a lot of juices, if it's a lot of Cokes and sodas, all of that gets broken down extremely rapidly as glucose in the bloodstream puts a lot of stress in your pancreas. And those are the kind of things that make us diabetic. So the first things first is we have to start there and drinking water eating good protein and vegetables and removing all the bad stuff, you know, that that's where I would really focus on. And if you need help with that, Rita, I would, what I would do is email our customer experience team at cs at nativepath.com and ask for our guides for a native body reset. And we'll give you a series of guides that show you what foods you should focus on and what foods you should eliminate from your house. That's one of the least things that'll make the most difference. And then taking care of the basics like water, 
you know, morning and evening sun exposure, good sleep, staying positive, you know, really connecting with your community. That's what that's that's what's going to make the most difference. So hang in there and please know we're here to support you. Irene says, can magnesium help my pain if my chondrosis grade level four and CRPS chronic regional pain syndrome? Uh, typically, yes. Yeah, typically these things can help with that. Um, but along with that, Irene, like I've been mentioning before, um, you know, don't rely on one thing. Try try the other things that are going to help with pain as well. Catherine says, do I take both powder collagen and your collagen care plus? I would I recommend that. Yeah, for sure. So what collagen is going to give you a lot of the uh, external forms of collagen that you need, right? Co you, you take in collagen, that's going to go to areas where collagen is needed in your body. Collagen Care Plus is what provides a lot of the, the raw materials, the vitamins and minerals, so your body can start producing more collagen um, endogenously, endogenously on its own. So good question there. Joyce says, I take D3 and K2 in the morning. I plan to take magnesium at night, like you suggested. Should I also take D3, K2 at night? Typically, I just take D, uh, D3, K2 in the morning. I think you'll be fine with that, Joyce. But yeah, magnesium at night is, is preferred by me. Looper says, my husband had a motorcycle accident. Oh, no. And had a dislocated hip and has restless, restless leg, leg syndrome. Would this help? Yeah, typically, with if, if he's still experiencing uh, chronic issues, especially like the restless leg syndrome, that, that typically is a nerve type issue. And we talked about these forms of magnesium, the oxide and the glycinate are particularly helpful with uh, nerve related issues. All right, I think that's it. Let me get one more. All right, everybody. Okay, well, I think that's it. Wonderful. All right, well, all of you, I hope you enjoyed that. And uh, please, we, lo we love your feedback and thank you again for, for coming and joining us and thank you for all your questions and being active in the group. We really enjoy these webinars. We hope you do too. And uh, Rachel, you have any fin final parting words? I mean, I'm just reading through the chat and I, I think the biggest thing is definitely, I want to thank everyone for joining us and, you know, showing us the exercises, but I was seeing Ruth, uh, Ruth had a one comment here I didn't want us to miss and she's having a lot of issues, a lot of pain. And one of the things that you covered, Chad, in going over is really going back to the basics in removing toxic oils, removing sugars, inflammatory foods getting your body moving. And I do see that she did come in here that she is limited on movement, but just doing the best you can to be mindful and trying to get outside. Um, those are the best things you can do. Cause I was seeing her type in here. I wanted to make sure I answered her question. Just, you know, letting her know, like you said earlier to email our team, we can give her more resources to help her along her way. And so um, I just really hope that she can find the, re the relief she needs. And I appreciate everyone joining us today. And Hopefully all this information and the exercises will help you get out of pain and feel your best. Yeah, thank you. Thank you for that, Rachel. Yeah, and, and, and we get it. We get it. Sometimes, sometimes it's frustrating, you know, but if nothing else, right, we've, we've got to keep moving. And uh, the, the posture correction exercise, there was another question about, I uh, think from uh, Frederica, about neuropathy and numb, numbness, tingling in the legs. That posture correction exercise can be so powerful, right, where you just slouch and you overcorrect, slouch, and you overcorrect, and you get movement. But, you, but the thing is, none of these things happen with positive results if you just do it one time, right? You've got to stay consistent and really do it um, throughout the day, um, every day, you know, every 10 times every couple hours is, is what's really going to make the difference as to really offset sitting a lot and not moving. So we want to do the best we can. So all right, everybody, thank you all so much for your questions. And, uh, and yeah, we hope you all have a great day and thank you again for joining. We'll see you next time. Goodbye, everybody. Have a good day. Bye-bye.